no. With Serena Saga. Thanks, Sophie, and welcome to Late Look North. Good evening, I'm Serena Saga. A family who are struggling to find a place in a specialist school for their disabled son says the system is broken. Joseph, Joseph, who has autism, is due to start secondary school in Sunderland, but his parents say he simply won't be able to cope in mainstream education. Jim Scott reports. Just born at 24 weeks and three days. Wasn't really expected there last night, to be honest with you. When Joseph was born, he weighed just a pound and eight ounces and had to go through a major operation on his heart just two weeks later. He's had nine other surgeries since. Now, aged 11, his parents, Gemma and Paul, say he's facing a new problem. He may not get a place at a secondary school that can look after his needs. We need Joseph in a school that's got some sort of provision for children with needs. Uh, obviously, he's hearing, he's autistic needs, he's learning difficulties. It's no good putting him in a remain strange school. He needs to be on an amended curriculum. He will not be able to cope with the work of a year seven child. Joseph has been diagnosed with autism, and his parents say he's about four years behind his peers and will struggle to cope anywhere other than a school which can focus on learning difficulties. It's stressful. Um, it's just constant worry. Uh, all you want is the best for your son. You just want him to be put in a place where you know he's going to get the best care, the best learning. That's what he needs. In a joint statement, the Council and Together for Children, which runs child services in Sunderland, tells me while it's not appropriate to discuss individual students, Places for pupils with special education needs are allocated according to their requirements and what it says is an education healthcare plan. It says this is always shared with parents for feedback and once finalised and a place secured, parents are fully advised of their options to appeal. In response, the Department for Education says that funding for young people with complex needs will be increasing to £10.5 billion this year. They say that's an increase of more than 60% than in 2019. But back in Sunderland, Gemma and Paul will be spending the next few months trying to do what they hope is best for their son. Jim Scott, BBC Look North. Management at a County Durham caravan factory have refused to comment on a report that around 190 workers are to lose their jobs. The report says the cuts at Irwin Hymer, based at Dells Lane, follow a fall in caravan sales. The company has issued a statement saying it's reviewing its staffing levels and has started consultations with the employees concerned. The Victorian cliff lift at Saltburn, hit by a major fire last month, won't reopen at Easter as had been hoped. Redcar and Cleveland Council said the fire left serious internal damage which requires a full rewire. The famous funicular tramway is 140 years old this year. A guitarist with a cult heavy metal band from the northeast has made a career out of juggling the two big loves of his life. Rob Weir founded the Tigers of the Pantang in the late 1980s, but when he's not touring the world, the Geordie musician is racking up train miles working on board. Rob is a rock and rail star. By night he's lead guitarist with the Tigers of Pantang. By day he's a leading crew member for LNER. But it wasn't always like this. The Tigers formed in 1978 in Whitley Bay. They soon became part of the new wave of British heavy metal, enjoying success in the charts, gigging with the greats, and hanging out with rock royalty, like Lemmy from Motorhead and Gary Moore from Thin Lizzy. You really lived the dream, didn't you, back in the day? Uh, yeah, there were a few dreams, to be fair. Um, one of them I recall playing in Reading in 1980, White Snake were headlining, and played to it's up to 2,000 people, which is quite something. And we were back there two years later, co-headlining with Iron Maiden. It was, it was a great, great time, it really was. Got to about 87, and I just got really disillusioned with everything and kind of walked away from the music business. It was three years after the Tigers reformed in 1999 that Rob found his second calling. 
He may be worshipped on stage by adoring fans, but on the 3.30 to King's Cross, he's part of the train team with a job to do. Do you know the guy that just served you your rosé is also a rock quarry? I'm amazed, actually. Yeah, I yeah. If I'd have known before, I'd have got his autograph. He looks a bit like a rock god. Yeah. <laughs> He's got that look about him. A wild life with the tigers and a quiet life on the tracks. So how do these worlds coexist? They coexist very well for me, you know. I get up a plane, go home, get showers. And get on the train? And get on the train, yeah. You must lose a lot of pet petrols doing that. Right, from the tigers to the weather now with Lisa Gallagher. Good evening. Well, we are going to see some brighter skies over the next few days, but as we go through the night, we are going to have some showers. So brighter with showers for the next few days, but also feeling colder. So the showers start to feed in tonight. They will be heavy at times. They'll be wintry over the higher ground and always most frequent across Cumbria and the Pennines. Enough clear spells in between to allow a frost as temperatures dip just below freezing. Tomorrow it is going to be a bright and a blustery day with fairly frequent showers through the morning, especially across Cumbria. They'll become less frequent into the afternoon, still wintry over the tops of the hills and feeling chilly with a brisk southwesterly wind taking the edge off the temperature as it rises to around average 8 or 9 degrees. Over the weekend, we're going to see those showers tending to fade out. The wind will ease down as well. It's still going to be feeling quite chilly though with frost overnight and during the day up to 8 degrees. And that's all we have time for tonight. Adam Power will be here with, for you in the morning with the breakfast bulletin. But from all of us here, have yourselves a very good night. Bye-bye.